created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. and finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow, and to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon! The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a dr Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? 
Uh-oh. The dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him. Strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream... Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben! Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God, whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. 
Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, What a strange dream! Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job, this man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. 
But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things, and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me. Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. Your spies! No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar! There are only 10 of you. One brother was killed, and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us, and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No, he'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. Then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. 
Stop! Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup! Oh, I don't understand. No. Thief! For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, I don't understand. Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No! No! Take me instead! No, me! Please, Great One! When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin! Joseph! It's true I'm Joseph Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know your name Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel. Go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, 
Come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him, could it? Thank you, I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes, and one day I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, and God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home from battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, Father. We're old enough. And strong enough. We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Hey, wait, everybody! Wait! Don't leave without me! Please! Please let me go, Father! I want to fight for the people of Israel, too! <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And then... And then... I'm not afraid of those Philistines. Oh! So please, Father, please let me go fight too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep, and Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. 
You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Abinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so spare yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh huh? Not me. Not me? Uh, not me either. <laughs> Just one man. If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Now, who is brave enough to fight? A giant! Just step forward! I'll be waiting! Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? I... Whoa. Ooh. No, don't even think about it. I'll try to... Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll... Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. 
Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? Ah. <sighs> oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to father in Bethlehem. The king will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Now remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you'll let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son, I told you before, they won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier, and you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But Father, I'm strong, and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh my God! Oh my God. Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? What do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear! But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant! You'll even let him marry his own daughter! And none of you are brave enough to try? No! Because none of us want to die for no reason! Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy. <laughs> Says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> Says God will help him fight the giant. <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> Tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But sire... Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. He is, I understand, a giant of a man, and I am not. His spear appears to be the size of a small tree And all I've got is a slingshot This Philistine is large But I know who's in charge I have a giant of a god, you see Bigger than the trouble This Philistine is large, but I know who's in charge. I have a giant of a god, you see, bigger than the trouble in front of me. Even nine feet tall, starts looking pretty small, next to the giant of a god with me. I have a giant. little hero? Looks like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boy speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, Your Majesty. I am young and small, but God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David, 
and may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield. Get my armor. Put them on young David. Huh? Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says! <laughs> I can hardly pick up your sword, your majesty. And your shield is much too heavy for me. Uh, David. God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. Think you can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother, it is you! Our brave baby brother David, bring the boy here to King Saul. Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, he always remembered the comforting words of God.